folks, we're back again from the Gamma Trade Show, and I'm here with Nick from Z-Man Games. And, uh, well, actually, this is, what we're looking at first here is not even a Z-Man game. No, this is a new studio going to be launching uh, to run side-by-side uh, side side with Z-Man. Uh, this is a studio called Pretzel Games that uh, I'll give you guys a shot of later. This game is called Flick 'Em Up. It's going to be released at Gen Con of this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the first time we're actually showing this on video, so uh, exciting. So, th so this is a dexterity game, though. This is a dexterity game. So the concept behind the pretzel game studio is really a, the type of a game where you can play while eating a pretzel in one hand. If you uh, come by, if you're going to be a Gen Con or your audience will be a Gen Con, our booth is going to be designed around that kind of theme as well. And this is a, we like to call this a dexterity game, but it's more than just your standard run of the mill, you know, flick something at something else type game. Uh, we wanted to go a little bit more in depth with the game and give it a little bit more uh, a little bit more gameplay appeal, and that's why we have within this box. It's a trilingual box, so you're going to have English, French, and German in this box, so it'll be available around the world. And right, and it comes with the the this, scenario book, the which scenario I've never seen for dexterity languages. games before. That's where we wanted to go a little different this time. We wanted to really give the the players an option of playing different types of scenarios and. Uh, this is just uh, some of the pieces. So you have in the box, you'll have a bunch of buildings. You will have um, cowboys and outlaws, uh, which will also have in the box here, I have their hats somewhere, oh, right here in this bag. So they will actually, each cowboy uh, and each outlaw will have a cardboard hat that they get to wear, which will dictate which number this is. Uh, you will have different character cards. Mm -hmm. So these character cards will let you uh, show you which character is represented by which hat, and you will be able to line them up on this player aid. Um, so you'll line it up like, oh, there's a, supposed to be a bar here at the bottom. There we go. Oh, so that almost looks like a shooting gallery. Well, that's the actually that's a bit of the, the way we wanted it to look. And actually, you see, uh, we'll get some shots of these after for you guys. But you'll see on here that you actually have uh, when these guys are gone, you have a little tombstone behind to represent that they have been knocked out of the game. So it's basically outlaws versus the good guys. It's outlaws versus the good guys, and you have different scenarios. Different scenarios have different pieces. So, one example is. In, in Western themes, your Winchester rifle is a more accurate gun. Right. So to represent that, we actually have a little Winchester uh, token here, which you will use with your bullet to help aim the gun and give you a more accurate shooting uh, within the game. So, for example, you would lay this out. I don't know if it'll show up well on the camera, but you'll lay it out on the table here like this, and then you can use it to aim to give you a more accurate shot when you flick your token at your uh, wow, that at is your neat. cowboys. And then you get, you see, I'm not very good at it anyway, but... That's fine, I'm not good yeah. at all, so I, I, I'll have to play against you. And what, <laughs> that sounds fun. We also have one of the scenarios, this is someone's personally being, my favorite. Someone's being hung? One of, one of the outlaws has been captured, and the sheriffs are going to be hanging him. And then the, the other outlaws are coming to try to save him. So you'll have your outlaw here under the... Uh, under the noose, and then you'll have your sheriffs guarding him, and you'll have the other outlaws coming from across the table to try to rescue him. And then uh, this is an awesome scenario. How long do the scenarios take about? Uh, they play between about 30 and 45 minutes. Um, and you, one of the fun things with this, so you can play 30 to 45 minutes, you can you play the preset scenarios, you can make up your own scenarios as you're playing the game uh, over time. Uh, the other thing that we really like about this is you'll notice here at the bottom of the buildings that there's a little opening here. So we actually have a wooden token that you'll be using to move around the board. And this wooden token fits between these doors here. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is one of the characters can be inside the building using uh, guarding that building. For example, there's or the a bank. bank. Yeah. So you could have sheriffs guarding the bank or outlaws trying to get into the bank to rob the bank. Once you flick your token into the bank, your character is in the bank. If another token, if another character wants to come into the bank, they can enter it, and you can actually have a, um, a standoff within the bank between an outlaw and a sheriff. What you'll do is you'll set up. I'll just move this. Oh, man, I love the western thing. This is exciting. What you can do is you'll set up across the table. You'll have the sheriff who was in the building and the outlaw who's come into the building. The outlaw will be. And what's fun about this is, like all westerns, you're shooting from the hip. So you always put your bullet next to your character's hip, and you'll shoot at the sheriff and try to knock him over, which I didn't do. If you... I have more bullets. Right, I'm shooting now, and I'm shooting from the hip over here. Let's see. So what you would do is you would normally... One thing, Tom, before you do that, if you're having a standoff and you miss the first time, the sheriff will actually take a step forward 
and shoot at you. So you'll be getting closer and closer as you're shooting at each other. Yeah, but he's dead now. Yeah. Is he? Oh. <laughs> we got a lot of bullets in here. <laughs> I'm like, I got, okay, that's it. Let's see if the Winchester you helps You want to use the Winchester on So I can, like, aim directly at the guy now. Yeah. Oh, man, I like this. I'm, I'm going to use this aiming thing in all my dexterity games. Ah, I winged him almost. Okay, so. One of the, <laughs> one of the other things, actually, that, that is a rule in the game. If you hit a character, bump him, and he just turns, you've winged him. It, to actually score the hit, he has to be knocked over. Oh, okay. So if you just bump him and he kind of turns, oops, you clipped him, but you didn't quite get him. And then you keep going back and forth. And you keep taking a step forward. You keep taking turn. a step forward. In the, in the standoffs, you're always taking a step forward until you're like this. And at which point, if you miss, well, you know. <laughs> Okay, so this is coming out at Gen Con. This you is said. coming out at Gen Con. Uh, it's going to be a worldwide release at Gen Con, uh, and this is yeah, this is going to be one of the big. This is the first uh, release for Pretzel Games. We're very excited about this studio. Well, I'm excited now too. Now you just uh, people are watching this. Last week, yeah, um, you released the newest expansion for Pandemic. Yes. Um, State and, of emergency last week. And we're already starting to hear rumblings about Legacy, and mm -hmm. that's coming out. That's an Essen release, so October 8th. Again, it's going to be a worldwide release. So, can you explain that there are two different covers then? Yeah. So the, what we're doing is um, it's a pandemic version similar to Risk Legacy, where you're going to have stickers that will permanently change your board. You're, you'll actually have some stickers that will go in your rule book, that will go on your character cards. Uh, you may have seen some spoilers last week. Uh, I try was, not to read them, but yes. Yeah, there was a, well, me too, actually. I haven't read through that whole box yet because I'm very excited to play it myself. But... Uh, you have stickers that will go on your cards, and what we're doing is we're releasing two different boxes. One will be red, one will be blue. The contents of the box will be identical between the two. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference is really for people who want to run, well, first, if you have a preference between red and blue, you know, there's always that <laughs> red and blue preference out right. there. And then, um, actually, we have right here, thank you, we have a, a mock-up of the red box that uh, oh, this is we big. have to show with us. So this is going to be Pandemic Legacy box size. Wow. And, uh, the blue, the box is really, uh, it's just an external difference. Everything inside is the same. Uh, some people will have a preference between one or the other. Other people will maybe want to have two copies. One you're playing with, I don't know about you, but I have two distinct gamer groups that I play with. Mm -hmm. uh, my Tuesday night group will have one color box. My Friday night group will have another color box, so I don't have to mix the two games up. Because like Risk Legacy, once you've changed the game, uh, the game is going to be permanently changed, and you're not going to want to mix your two uh, your two groups and your two games together. Now, does the game have like a um, a forever playability type thing on it? Uh, I'll be honest with you, Tom. I haven't played through. Well, it that's yet. right. You said you don't know other things, so never mind. I I only know a little bit about the, which is kind of funny. I work there. I'm I'm selling these games, and I don't want to spoil it for myself. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, that there will be uh, there will be options available. Otherwise, though, this game will play over a series of, what I do know is it will play over a series of 12 to 24 different games. So the, the Legacy game uh, plays over, uh, we've talked about this, so I can't I can say this, it plays over the, a year of, uh, of game time. Mm -hmm. So each game represents a month of the year. And you can play each month up to twice. If you fail the first time, you can replay it. And then you can do that for each month. The consequences of that failure will have an effect on the subsequent games. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to play the game 24 times, <laughs> and then we'll all be dead. Yeah. Um, is there anything else uh, uh, from Zeman uh, that we can look forward to? Uh, we have another couple of uh, a couple of exciting things coming out of Gen Con this year uh, from Zeman. We have one title that I. Our, our big release I can't just announce just yet. We're, we're waiting on some final pieces for that, but. Uh, uh, a lot of gamers are very excited about Tragedy Looper, uh, mm -hmm. and we have our first Tragedy Looper expansion coming out at Gen Con of this year. Uh, we have another game that uh, we're hoping to get for Gen Con as well from the same studio. Uh, different style of game, so it's not going to be a storytelling game like Tragedy Looper is, but it will be a, um, it's going to be more of a worker placement style of game. This is the worker placement deduction style game? Yes. Yeah, yeah I played that one. You it's played from, that one? It's from the same studio. From Back of Fire, yeah. Right. I forget the name of it, though. What? Uh, it was called Old World Code of Nines. That's originally. right. It's a very odd name. Yeah, we're we're shortening it up to Code of Nines. Ah, I see. Just to make it a little easier to, to remember. Uh, so we have that uh, hopefully coming out at Gen Con this year, barring any unforeseen circumstances. 
Um, we have some exciting titles coming out in the next few months. Uh, Lords of Scotland is coming out in June. We're is this a reprint of the old we're card game? Reprinting Lords of Scotland. Oh, that's Scotland. a cool card game. So that one's coming out in May or June. I don't have my exact date with me right now. A lot of it depends on how quickly we can get it in. There's that whole the port situation. Port situation that's ruining board gaming. It's really it's a shame. Um, so we're we're hoping for that to come in uh, in time for uh, early June. Uh, we have Arboretum that comes out next month. I don't know if you know our deluxe card game line. Uh, okay. We have Parade. We have Black Spy, uh, Fairy Tale. Those right. small box card games. Well, I just played a new one from y'all, uh, where, where the trees changed color. That's Arboretum. Oh, never yeah. mind. <laughs> so <laughs> so I've already the, played it. Yeah, then. that's the one that comes out. It actually releases uh, this month. Okay. Uh, next week, actually. All right. Uh, with the first day of spring, that's when we're going to have that game coming out, and it's, uh, it's a set collecting, uh, it's a set collecting card game with a bidding mechanic to dictate what you're able to score each round. It's uh, a lot of fun. I've been playing that one since Germany when I saw it. Yeah. Oh, well, we're really looking forward to seeing all this stuff. Yeah. And so we'll see at, at Gen Con. Yes, for sure. We'll see some of the stuff you mentioned and mm-hmm. and an unreleased Z-Man game, yeah. an unannounced Z-Man game, mm-hmm. and then this pretzel game. This will have, and this will actually be at uh, its own. Uh, the intention right now is for this to have its own booth. So okay. it won't be in the Z-Man booth. It should have its own booth. Obviously, barring logistical challenges. All right. Well, thank yeah. you. I look forward to all this. Well, great. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys, for watching Dice Tower. I'm Tom Vassell.